Welcome to this video from In 28 Minute. Thanks for all your love which helped us to grow to 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and more than 46,000 students on Udemy. You can find more about us on our website www.in28minutes.com. This video is a part of series of 100 plus videos celebrating my 15 years of experience with programming, design and architecture. In these videos, we talk about how to become a good programmer and a good architect. We also talk about Java related frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies other than the varied range of tools that we make use of. You can find more details in the description of the video. In this video, let's look at an important thing. What are NFRs, non-functional requirements? So when you look at a requirement, it says, okay, this is how the screen should look like. These are the fields. This should happen when I click this particular button. All those kind of things are your functional requirements. There is another category of requirements which are kind of the non-functional requirements which are <laughs> ignored mostly. Uh, typically, you look at non-functional requirements after every functional requirement is met and that's probably not the ideal way to do that. So, what are these non-functional requirements? Um, the most important ones among the non-functional requirements are performance and scalability so basically what is performance i mean how fast does a screen render that's basically performance right so who would want to see an application use uh, like which takes 10 seconds to load or 15 seconds to load you would lose the user for sure so performance is quite the most important non-functional requirement the other one is scalability scalability is quite a important non-functional requirement it's different from performance so performance basically says how much time does it take to uh, render a screen when there are 100 users so let's say my application i'm expecting my application to have 100 users so the first year of the application i'm expecting 100 users and as long as there are i mean at the max of 100 users i would want a screen to render at least within two seconds that's good so scalability is more like okay uh, if i need x resources for 100 users what resources do I need for 200 users? So a good scalable application would have at least maximum 2x. So if I currently have, let's say, three servers and based on which I'm supporting 1000 users, if I double the servers, three servers to six servers, would I be able to have 2000 users on it? So that's basically the question of scalability. So it's very important that the applications are scalable. So scalability is a very, very important characteristic of a application. And it's even better if I can actually support more users uh, with less number of servers. The next important non-functional requirement is maintainability. I write some code, how easy is it for somebody else to maintain it over a, pe over a period of time? I mean, things like code quality, I mean, things like having good design, all those kind of stuff come into picture in here. So if let's say your application has bad design and when I touch, when I make a change somewhere, somewhere else there's a big impact. So those kind of things would cause problems down the line. Or if I write some code which is not easy to understand, so it's not really maintainable. So that's the maintainability. Portability is basically uh, how easy is it to port it into some other environment. So let's say I'm using Unix. So is it easy for my application to run on Windows or can I change a specific framework? Can I easily switch from one framework to another framework? So this portability thing is really uh, complex uh, in the sense that uh, you need to understand what kind of flexibility you need in the future. So would you really switch from one database to another database? Would you really switch from one operating system to another operating system? Will you switch? Uh, really switch from Java to something else, then probably you need to s start writing services and things like that. So portability is kind of an NFR where it's not always an absolute answer. It's not 100% portability. So it will not be like every like every damn thing that you use in the application, you would want to replace it over a period of time. It might not be that. So you decide, okay, I would want portability in these aspects and I don't want portability in these aspects. So that's kind of how you work, out, work it out with portability. Availability is basically how much time the application is available for use for a user. 
so how much time is it available for the end user um, so le let's say there is a new release going in and you have to bring the application server down or if let's say your application crashed and it's not available for the user and these are all the things that can reduce the availability of the application security is another non-functional requirement it's quite quite important security is also a very uh, tough thing and i've uh, heard of I, I mean I've heard of organizations which pay a huge deal of fines because they lost some data so security is very very important and security is again multi-layered so you should like we are talking about application security you are talking about in infrastructure level security and all that kind of stuff so things like SQL injection cross-site scripting those are the important things from the perspective of application security I mean these are all the things which are listed like I think the OWASP top 10 has a good list. Uh, the other things which are really important from the perspective of security is the infrastructure. Like what frameworks are you using? Are they secure? Uh, what is the application server you are using? Does it have any security flaws? What is the operating system? What is the network you are using? Is it, I mean, is it behind a firewall? I mean, your load balancers, everything related to that should be secure. So. I mean, security is quite a big topic, as I said earlier, and your application has to be really secure. Uh, testability of an application is also very, very important. Um, if you go a decade back, then I would say most of the Java applications then were not really testable. I mean, we hardly wrote any J units. I mean, if you talk about EJBs and things like that, I mean, writing J unit, leave alone writing J unit tests, testing something out, I mean, testing it outside a container is almost next to impossible. Uh, with frameworks like Spring, I mean, now most of the applications are very testable. So you kind of have Spring do the uh, dependency injection. They buy your code, like so you can have all your dependencies injected in. So when I'm writing tests, those dependencies can be mocked and I can easily write tests for these specific code. So testability of an application is really, really important. So if, like, let's say I interact with another application, I should not need the other application to be always up and running for me to test my application. I should be able to stop that very easily. I should be able to write very un good unit tests for each of my classes. I should have good integration tests, probably using mocks for other systems. So testability is a very, very important non-functional requirement. So that's a high level overview of uh, non-functional requirements. There are a lot of other non-functional requirements we are not covering in here, like resilience and things like that. But this is kind of a high level summary of what are the things that are important from the non-functional requirements perspective. Until the next time, see you. Thanks for watching this video. We created this video to celebrate my 15 years of experience with design, architecture and programming. We have created two complete Git repositories for you. Java Technology for Beginners and Java Best Practices. Java Best Practices covers my 15 years of experience with design patterns, code quality, design, architecture, and modern development practices. We talk about REST services, SOAP web services, microservices, cloud native applications, four principles of simple design, among a varied range of other topics. Tells you how to become a good programmer, designer, or an architect. Java Technology for Beginners focuses on the frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies and tools related to application development. You can find link to the repositories in the description of the video. In 28 minutes has some of the highest rated courses on varied range of topics. You can find more information on our website www.in28minutes.com.